Okay, Robert, here's your bird. Actually have two guys working on it right now. It's dusty, but it's gonna get better. A lot of people have been wondering what's happened with 1-4 Victor Mike. It's been sitting here. Now we do know about these holes. We're way down in there somewhere that need to get some new pieces made because they weren't cut properly. That hole was cut to find a, a potential leak. Right, to access a repair to a leak. Yeah, and that's structural back there. I mean, yeah, so it's riveted right to the spar. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the wing stem. It's just like oh, okay. sitting on. That's the stress wing stem. And then this- now You have to put a doubler. Yep, to mount it. And that and the and the plate that they had in there, or the cover was not even the same thickness as the skin. Have a not oh. just left the open. Hole. Really? Yeah. So Matt, what are you cutting there? What are you doing? I am transferring the hole from what is the clear plastic to my doubler piece. Okay. Well, look at that. That's how I pick, <clears throat> picked up the existing holes was with transfer plastic. Draw it down, you can see what you got. We can drill right through and match the holes, and then you throw it onto your plate that you're going to make the doubler out of, transfer everything through. And somebody, that's actually in the, uh, the stressed wing skin? Yes. So that was improperly cut. Uh, make a hole where they're, they were hunting for a, a fuel leak, I think. Yes, I do believe so. And now, isn't there a hole there or, or an access panel already there in the newer models? Um, it, it's normally on the, the uh, outboard okay. flap there, but yes. Oh, it still took uh, engineering to get this all figured out. Yeah. Well, it's good to see. Well, I'm, I'm wondering which one's gonna get flying first. This one or Mike Echo? Okay, so there, is that the, that the hole that was improperly cut? Yes. Okay. So you've got this piece here. So where's that kind of go? Piece. Left. All right. right like Do that. That. So it gets all riveted into the skin and then you got to cut out that cutout area and that's for the new access panel? Yep. Okay. Bullet. Well, right, see this is the screen that goes in the pickup. Uh, in the wing? In the wing. Mm -hmm. Well, this isn't supposed to be here. What's this all about? Eek. No, that is weird. Yeah. Did he think that there was getting contamination in the engine because the screen was too coarse? I don't know. Who knows? Just little things that people do. Now there is a there is a service bulletin that this this piece slides in the tube, the aluminum tube, and the aluminum tube goes back behind the wing and all the way to the sump of the engine. Yeah. Well, if you have any water in the wing, it can accumulate in in one of these little squares between the stainless steel and the aluminum tube. Mm -hmm. And you can get some uh, dissimilar metal uh, corrosion then on the tube. Okay. And it can corrode a pinhole through the tube. Yep. And when it does that, it starts leaking fuel and it's hard to tell where it's coming from. And I think that they might have had a pinhole in that aluminum tube but they cut the access holes in the wing because they thought it was somewhere else. That explains it. <clears throat> well, those access holes, like this drawing we have here, were approved on later airplanes. Mm -hmm. Your airplane has this access hole, and there's no cover that goes on it. It's wide open, okay. but it has a great big doubler around it that picks up, like any, Anything on the airplane, if you cut that hole in there, you can't say, well, there's plenty of margin in the wing skin, that's not going to be a problem. Well, do you want to pull the loads on the wing again mm -hmm. and find out if it's a problem? No, you have to add back in enough structure that will carry the loads that that piece you cut out carry. Yeah. 
And that guy that determines that has to be a designated engineering representative. And so it's always easier to just add the material back in mm -hmm. to carry those loads than it is to try to analyze it and say, yep. well, it's still okay. So you're always going to be required to put some structure in there to account for the hole you cut. Mm -hmm. And look at all those rivets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 on that side. Little double row rivets here and single row rivets there. And these rivets tie into the spark cap. Yep. Well, we're getting close. Here's the panel for the airplane. And as you can tell, it's pretty antiquated. It's got an old King uh, GPS in it and does not have any new uh, ADSB in out transponders. So we felt that probably the best opportunity we've got right now from an economic standpoint is put the Garmin GNX 375 in, which is a combination of the uh, GTX 345 transponder and the NAV portion of the GTN 650. So it kind of gives us the best of all worlds. And then we can uh, get to flying and get the next part of this video done. So stay tuned for the next chapter of the 1-4 Victor Mike saga. And if you like the videos, please like and subscribe. See you for the next one.